Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Human Humane Architecture. Normally, Martin Despang is sitting here as host, but this summer while he's away, we're going to have uh, various people from the Hawaiian chapter of Docomomo do various presentations about mid-century modern architecture in Hawaii. And first, I'm John Williams, and let me introduce Graham Hart with WCIT and Brandon Large with um, WATG Honolulu. And uh, today is a continuation of the last program that we did, and um, that was about the career arc of the architect Edwin L. Bauer. And this time, Brandon is going to, Brandon and Graham are both going to talk about two of Bauer's buildings, residential buildings that he completed in the 1950s. First, I'd like to do a short history on Bauer. First slide. Next slide. <laughs> Mr. Bauer was born in San Francisco in 1905. He graduated from the University of Southern California in 1928. And uh, we don't know much about what he did during the 1930s, but we can be pretty confident that it was, there weren't many opportunities for a young architect once the uh, Great Depression started. Um, but then we do know that uh, Mr. Bauer arrived in Pearl Harbor early in the 1940s and joined a large group of architects that were assembled to take care of the immense amount of construction that was required for the war effort. As soon as the war was over, as soon as um, Edwin Bauer could do it, 1945, he opened his own firm, Edward L. Bauer Architect. And this is an image of St. Elizabeth's Episcopal Church on North King Street. It's one of his early projects. And uh, he completed it in 1952. That's only seven years into the span of uh, his career. And um, let me go to the next project, uh, next slide, excuse me. One of the things that we can see early on with Bauer is even with a traditional form like a, a church, he brought in his uh, great aesthetics, um, sensibilities for modern design, and carefully did the details, the motifs, and that shows even in a building like this. Let me go to the next. This is the Breakers. Um, it was one of the early hotels. It's on Beach Walk in Waikiki. And it, um, well, the, the client had come to Bauer and asked him to do a reasonably priced hotel with more of a Hawaiian atmosphere about it. And what Bauer decided to do is to create a, a series of one and two story buildings and arranged them around a courtyard that had a swimming pool and very lush landscaping. This is a, a photograph of the building when it was completed in, excuse me, in 1954. The next image, this is a more current um, image of the uh, breakers, and you can see it's still intact. And some of the features you see in this photograph, the Shoji screens on the second level, the uh, lattice um, and jealousy screens on the first level. You'll see these things coming up on a lot of his designs as he goes forward. Next image. This is the Hawaii Ana Hotel. And it's also on Beachwalk, and it's right next door to the Breakers Hotel. It was completed one year later in 1955. This time, this is an, a rendering, an early rendering of the building, and Bauer has taken the Hawaiian atmosphere and made a more modern composition out of it. But at the same time, it's still around a central courtyard with a swimming pool and very lush landscaping. Next image, please. This is a more current photograph of 
the Hawaii Ana, Hawaii Ana, and you can see it's still intact. Uh, the uh, lava rock feature walls, the rooms that open to the center courtyard, and uh, the jealousy windows for ventilation. So you, these were just three of the buildings that Bauer had created in the first 10 years of his firm. And they show the, the range of the kind of projects that he was able to do. Now, I would like to turn this over to um, Brandon Large, who's going to talk about the next image and the project that he's going to present. So this is the Oahuan, and uh, I live here. Uh, my girlfriend and I purchased about a year ago because we just fell in love with the lush landscape and uh, the way the buildings were laid out and the sense of community that we felt there. Um, this is a, an image of the sign at the entry um, off of Nehoa Street. Um, and, uh, well, A, love the sign sitting right in front of the... <laughs> great graphics and everything. Great, great graphics. Um, popped off the lava rock. Uh, it's a 48-unit, it's a 48, uh, 48 two-story walk-up oriented around a courtyard. Um, and it was built in 1956 and has remained pretty intact um, due to the efforts of a lot of people, um, including board members over the years that have uh, really, really uh, fallen in love with the property and chosen to keep it um, what it was. Um, next slide. So I'm just going to start with kind of the smallest bit, which is the module. Um, and this is something that Bauer had, had started earlier on with the Hawaiiana and, and probably a, a few other um, developments that he had worked on. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. You have a living space, you have your wet areas, your kitchen, your bathroom in the middle, and then bedrooms off the back. Um, and this is on the first, the first level, the ground floor. Um, and you enter in from the front. Uh, you can see um, at the bottom of the screen, that's a photo of the, of the windows in the front. They're redwood, uh, redwood jealousies. So when you close it, it's pitch black. But when you open it, it really lets the light in um, and also provides a nice amount of privacy. And, and then the back windows uh, kind of translucent glass jealousies that let the light in also provide privacy. Um, it's a pretty comfortable unit. Um, it's uh, concrete construction. The walls uh, partitioning the different units are CMU. And all the infill walls are redwood tongue and groove. You can see also the, uh, the kitchen there uh, was they would close it off. Um, and I think it's just uh, kind of typical of the era to hide some of those things away, keep it nice and clean. Um, next slide. So on top of that, you have studios. Um, and whereas the bottom level units, you would enter from the courtyard in the center in the middle. Um, on these, you'll walk around the back and enter, enter from the back. Uh, the thing that these have that the one bedrooms don't have are these kind of expansive lanai's and um, these stackable shoji screen doors. Um, and you can see the, actually the first two images here of the Hawaiiana. Um, and they're very, very similar, if not identical, to the ones at the Oahuan. Um, and it's really nice. You have, so you have the courtyard right off of the, right off of the balcony, and uh, it's kind of just a real lush, nice, uh, tropical experience. And um, he, he did a good job of, of bringing the, you know, the outdoors indoor. Um, you have that opportunity there. Next slide. So this is kind of the relation in section. Uh, so you can see, um, and it has a butterfly roof, which is amazing. Um, Pretty nice mid-century kind of, you know, yeah. typical form there for a lot of uh, buildings of the modern era. Yeah. Um, the redwood jealousies kind of help to keep keep a lot of the sun out um, because the facade is pressed right up against the building's face. Um, but then on the lanai, um, sorry, on the on the studios upstairs. Uh, you have kind of a, a nice overhang that, that helps to uh, block the sun out. Um, but also, both units have great cross ventilation. And then the photo at the bottom there is just kind of the front facade of one of the buildings. And it's interesting to note, too, how close this building's facade is to the Hawaiiana and those other um, projects that, that John had gone through previously. Yeah, yeah, very similar. Um, in fact, the Hawaiiana is, is, is almost identical. I think some of the buildings seem to have 
you know, on the second level, maybe the unit layout was a little bit different, but they, mm -hmm. but they also had the redwood jealousies, um, oh, kind of floor to ceiling, on, even on the second level, I think yeah. on some of them. And then some had, had the balconies similar to this. Right. Seems like, yeah. Next slide. Um, and kind of the more interesting thing to me and the reason why uh, Rachel and I fell in love with this place, um, well, first off, it's very private. And, and Makiki, you don't get a lot of that typically. Um, so there's a, there's a giant monkey prod tree right up in the front. Uh, and it serves not only as kind of a privacy screen from the road, um, but also a sound buffer. Um, so, so it's not very loud. It's, it's actually pretty quiet as far as um, the outside neighbors are concerned. Um, and there's four main buildings that are oriented around the pool, uh, and, and it kind of it, it encourages community and it encourages interaction with your neighbors, which isn't typical of most condo or residential developments that you see nowadays, I don't think. Um, and living there, it, it is like that. You get to know your neighbors pretty quickly, um, for for better or for worse. But it's it's what it is, um, and. So the photos up on the screen, the top one's just me and some of my buddies hanging out at the pool. It's, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> nothing else to say about that. Um, the, uh, um, the center photo, you can kind of see how lush the, lush the landscape is. It's extremely tropical, um, and, it, and it feels like you're in Hawaii. It doesn't feel like you're anywhere else in the world. And the photo at the bottom is actually the Hawaiiana. And you can see the similarities in the layout, even just from that photo. Um, and, and also the sense of community that even back then, um, I, I think Bauer was really aiming for and, and hit the nail on the head. Uh, next photo. So quick diagram just to illustrate some things that happen when you have a courtyard layout like this. Um, one is that, there, so there's a sense of community, but you can also hear your neighbors. Um, it's it's you know the the place is meant to be open and and to allow allow the the wind to blow through and and all of these things um, but because of that you do end up hearing a lot of uh, a lot of your neighbors which isn't a bad thing if you have great neighbors especially um, but one thing that's really great about it is especially in a place like Makiki uh, there's like constant surveillance on this courtyard so you have really good passive security. Uh, which is kind of an added benefit that you don't really think about. So um, theft is actually really low here um, in comparison probably to some other areas. Um, and then of course the, the cross ventilation, um, the you know, just things you get from having a courtyard and not having these you know, double loaded units right next to each other. Um, you, can get the, you can get the air uh, flowing right through no matter where you are on the, on the property. Next slide. Um, so just a little bit on sense of place, and you know, Bauer really knocked it out with the Hawaiiana, and I think he, he did it here too. Um, and you can see how lush the gardens are and how tropical they are. Um, but also just the textures on the buildings, the lava rock wall, the matchstick blinds, which are, which are not only encouraged but mandated um, at the Oahuan. Uh, you can have any other type of blind because they want to make sure that this stays, okay. this stays uh, you know, very tropical and true to the original intent of Edwin Bauer. Um, and the texture with the redwood screens. Um, also, he did things like, uh, for instance, he specced uh, a top of panel um, in each room. One of the few things he specced because it was a pretty bare bones. Right, the interior were left fairly blank. Yep. I mean, it was just a hotel room and everything. And then I think different people have outfitted them differently over the years. But what was left in there that he specified is, is pretty, pretty awesome. So that's actually, again, a photo of the Hawaiiana, um, but it's pretty much exactly how he specced in his drawings. Um, and it looks exactly the same. Couldn't tell the difference myself. Uh, <laughs> next slide. Um, so this is our unit, uh, and Rachel and I renovated it. We bought it a year ago, and um, we're actually still working on it. It's kind of probably never going to be over. but Forever project. Right? Yeah, it's, for, it's yeah. a forever project. Um, but one thing that we felt was really important when we picked up the unit, we, one thing we fell in love with was that they still had the original bleach redwood walls um, as infill. So we wanted to change the layout a little bit, and it had been modified a bit. So we kind of took all the walls apart um, and created a kit of parts and, and then rebuilt it with the same materials because uh, that, that was the thing that was so charming about 
the unit to us. Um, and then, you know, expose maybe some of the materials that he wasn't intending on exposing, like the concrete and and whatnot. But um, yeah, our, our, we really tried to push on that. And luckily, I have a, a Rachel's a great designer and also an amazing ceramicist. So she made this she made this uh, sink here for us. And um, probably be making a few few others. We'll see how well this one works. <laughs> What's great about what you guys have done with your unit is that, like you said, have kind of taken it apart and put it back together and left the integrity of what Bauer had done with the interiors of these spaces and really tried to like celebrate it and lean into that. I mean, these buildings are 60 years old and so many people have, you know, painted over their bleach redwood true, true. or just, you know, torn out all the old cabinetry and put in some, you know, millwork that just doesn't really work with the space. But um, yeah, you guys definitely tried to well, lean into that. And it was important to us. We didn't want to change the layout. You know, the yeah. essentially, essentially, it's the same. We wanted to, if, if not, um, just keep what Bauer had had originally. We wanted to maybe just adapt it a little bit for our personal needs, but still keeping the integrity of the of the space. So right. that was it. And that's it for this guy. <laughs> Next slide, then. Next. So this is kind of interesting, right? So the Wahoo was built in, was it 56? Yep. 56, and then um, the Makiki Inn, which is kind of what, down the street a little bit in Makiki still, built in 56, 57-ish mm -hmm. area there. And then um, the Wahoo Tower, which is on the right there on the, um, on the slide, um, was then built in 57. And so uh, kind of can't tell from these images, but the Oahu Tower is sitting right next to the Oahu it's, it's the one actually right on Makiki, and it has the Makiki Street address. Um, clever renderings. Clever renderings, yeah, yeah. You kind of don't see that. Everything <laughs> looks like it's isolated in its own little lush <laughs> garden. Yeah. Uh, but the Makikian, or rather, sorry, the Oahuan Tower um, was kind of in this evolution of the same um, unit types uh, for Bauer of the Oahuan and the Ho Hawaiiana and the Breakers, and kind of an evolution of those, And right? at the same time pointing out that the elevations of the tower are something that he used in some of his other buildings. In, in particularly in the commercial building of the Continental um, Insurance Company on um, right. South King Street. So you, one of the things you can almost imagine people not realizing, he wasn't just doing these wonderful garden things. He was doing mid-rise buildings um, at the same time. So but that, um, this is a great lead into your project. Right, so this is actually this, is a advertisement for the Clio, which is the building that I live at, and it's great that you know you can kind of see the Oahuan was our first, the Makikian was our second, and the Oahuan Tower was our third, and now the Clio. This is our fourth project together, and come see a you know a developer's unit, see a model apartment, and, and check it out. Uh, so this is kind of a great evolution from his you know the um, Brandon's building the Oahuan down towards the uh, the Clio, which is a 1958 building. So next slide. So on the left of the image is uh, the Oahuan plan. And you, know, you can see that it had the living room and the bedroom. And this is actually the, the first floor units. Um, on the right is uh, the CLIA um, units. And so what um, Bauer has done here is he's taken some of the lessons that he learned on the Oahuan and some of the lessons he learned on the Oahuan tower and kind of combined them. So there's the breezeway walkway, which you see on the, on the um, bottom right of the, of the, the slide here. Um, you know, with the louvered doors and everything, and that's kind of how you enter the unit. And then on the back, he actually added this uh, lanai off the back, which is kind of what he did on the studios and the second floor units of the Oahuan. And so he's kind of um, added two kind of new spaces to the outside of, of this first floor unit, and it kind of increased that living space and increased the kind of privacy and, and, and um, you know, kind of breathability of that unit. The interior layout is more or less the same, closets and bathrooms and this tiny little kitchen and everything. So to go over the, the images, the image at the top right is the lanai off the back, um, jealousies or wood, wood louvers and a kind of a glass sliding door, so no shoji panels on this one. Uh, the image in the middle is actually a, a vintage photo from the Clio from back when it was being advertised. Um, and then the image on the bottom is that breezeway. And so what's interesting here is that, and I think maybe this works almost better, and this was a learning lesson for, for Bauer, was that he only left that, um, that 
wood louvers on the bottom third of the of the elevation, and then the the top two thirds is all glass. Mm -hmm. And so what that did was actually, you know, you can have um, blinds cover up the glass when you needed privacy, but you could also open up and let that light in all the time, and you can modulate the wind a bit more. So sometimes in, in the Oahuan units, you know, if you don't want the wind, but you want the light, you're kind of stuck in this you're position, mm -hmm. you know, where you maybe have half the wind, you know, louvers open, half them don't. Um, and also it's great because, you know, 50, 60 years later of seeing people kind of retrofit these units, you now see a kind of a typical thing that people do is, is they'll actually only put the curtains in that middle third because that's where really where people are walking by. And, you, you know, you don't want to have people looking directly into your units. But then you get that top third of light, that middle third of privacy and kind of diffuse yeah. light. And then that bottom third, you still get the ventilation through. So it works really well and kind of a, a nice lesson that, that Bauer has learned. Next slide. So what that is, uh, what that unit does now, because you have basically these two outdoor spaces on the, the front and the back of it, you now have a very symmetrical um, building where you can kind of stack all of these right next to each other, and you have these long horizontal bands that have wrap around each side of, of this kind of long um, apartment uh, building. Um, and, you know, it's great because, you know, they're, really kind of sculptural um, in, in its form, right? You have this rectangular mass that holds the actual living space, but then these, these long horizontal bands, which um, really just kind of add to the layers and, and the, the texture of the building and kind of make a very nice um, like shadow line on everything. Well, it produces a great um, band of black and white, void, solid. It's a, a really an artist looking at what he can do with architecture. Definitely, yeah, and it's, it's something that you really see in, in 3D when the whole building is together that, but in the plans you kind of kind of can't read that yet quite yet. Um, but so this is kind of the evolution of the Oahuan Tower and how he's turned it into a you know kind of a different model. So the next slide. Um, but then, you know, Bauer was known for these two-story walk-ups that uh, kind of centralize around a little center garden or a pool or kind of this communal living space. Um, so these are a couple of different projects. So there's the Hawaiiana, that is on the top right, the kind of the older rendering there, which was uh, something that John talked about earlier. That next image right below it in the black and white was the Oahuan. So again, these kind of you know units that centralize around a, a pool. And then the, the project on the bottom right is uh, the White Sands uh, Hotel in Waikiki. Yes, and it's in the news right now because it's been announced that a um, overall renovation is going to be done for the White Sands Hotel. It's one of the Bowers buildings again from the 1950s, and it was it. Without naming them, um, we think the new owners are very sensitive to what Bauer did, and um, I actually had a chance to walk through the, the White Sands property with the new owners and talk about what Bauer would have been do doing in that period, and I think that's it's going to come off as another great tribute to Bauer. Yeah. And so I hope, I'm we hope so. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and so then the uh, kind of the larger image on the left there is uh, kind of a, a close-up uh, rendering from the um, advertising renderings for for the Kalia, you know, the Kalia Hotel at Waikiki, and really it's kind of focusing on again you have this this little courtyard space, this communal space uh, centered around a pool and a garden, but now instead of a two-story or three-story walk-up, it's a 14-story tower. So pretty, pretty interesting that he tried to still kind of keep that, you know, cluster um, organization, um, with all, and all of its benefits that Brandon had talked about the Oahu, but now in a tower format. So next slide. Mm -hmm. So here's a, a, a kind of a far away shot, and this is actually a postcard that they used to sell um, back at the Clio when it was a, a, a apartment hotel back in 50, 58. Um, you can see that this was so this is an actual postcard. So someone crossed out the the unit that they lived in there. And that's what the little X is. <laughs> but so instead of that the Oahu and Tower, where it's just the one tower, um, the Kalia has three towers, and they're all kind of on this triangular lot, and you know kind of share the, either a pool space or a garden space. And he was able to pull the parking 
to the backside of the property and kind of really hide it from the street. So it's got this great street frontage, you know, and really capitalizes on all the uh, open space. But I mean, this is at you know the corner of uh, Anna and Hobron in Waikiki, and you don't get that open space anymore. And and it feels so private too. It does. It's like your own private resort. It's it's yeah, it's wonderful actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And before we leave that um, slide, we should uh, point out that uh, the painting of the building has started. Right, right. So over the course of its 60-year life, um, people have, you know, or you know, different times of uh, maintaining the building, they have repainted and repainted this building to more kind of a kind of a drabber, kind of less, you know, or less saturated color color scheme. So actually, we went back, uh, and because it's been 10 years since our last paint job. Um, we were like, hey, you know, let's try to return it back to these original colors. So we did our research and tried to figure out, you know, if they actually did these colors or not. And um, sure enough, if we go to the next slide, um, you can see here in the, in the top photo, there they are, the, the blue elevator towers kind of create this, these, these nice bookends at the center in the middle of the cluster of the property. Um, and then uh, the kind of uh, browner, um, grayer kind of rectangular masses for the apartment buildings themselves and then these nice white horizontal bands with a nice you know kind of deep shadow line uh, right behind them so it kind of creates a really a striking um, composition there oh. break the sea of beige That's yeah break Waikiki the sea needs. of beige yeah. <laughs> exactly but you know thankfully Waikiki Special District was totally for returning things back to their original intent mm -hmm. and you know it's great that we were able to find these you know 59 uh, you know and 60s uh, photos um, on the bottom image, it's kind of awesome to see uh, the context of, of Waikiki at the time. So again, this is you know across from what is now the you know Hilton Hawaiian Village, but in the photo at the bottom, on the left side, you see this little parabolic roof. That's the um, Waikiki Inn by Pete Wimberly, which was, I believe, done in '56. Um, then you also see the, the Kaiser Dome, an old Buckminster Fuller uh, dome project that was yeah. built in a week or something like that was the, you know, how it was publicized, uh, which was built in 59, so that gives a date for when these photos were. And, I mean, you think about it, right, Th this is right now a 14-story building, and it's one of the tallest buildings in Waikiki in, this, in these images. Um, so really, Bauer was, you know, cutting edge, this is 10 years into his career, he was yeah. trying to do something really, you know, you know it's a huge endeavor to, to build three big buildings. Um, of course, now they're the shortest buildings in the area, so it's kind of ironic. And, uh, and those two great other mid-century uh, masterpieces are gone. But next slide. So, like um, Brandon had talked about, you know, and and John had talked about that, uh, Bauer was, you know, really trying to bring in these kind of Hawaiian um, senses of places and, and kind of these motifs and these different. Uh, details that really brought it back. You know, and these are very modern and very um, economic buildings that he built, but um, you know, he still has these these elements that bring things back and kind of let you know that you're in Hawaii. So not only did you know the the, rush, the lush tropical gardens and the pools and everything help you bring that kind of sense of place, but you know, he found places to bring in rock walls. In the lobby, we've got this great shadow block that kind of looks like you know a little bit of like a diamond tapa pattern, and then in that center image there. There's actually some tiles in the lobby that have this great, you know, hand-painted uh, tapa pattern on it. And then throughout, there's this great kind of, you know, Hawaiian, almost like primitive uh, artwork on the walls. That's, you know, this great wood panels of, of you know, people uh, paddling and everything and fish, you know, in different areas and in, in the public spaces. And then the units themselves, you know, still have that matchstick um, shoji screens on the interior uh, uh, closets and louvered doors and mahogany and redwood. So, you know, different ways to kind of bring in this Hawaiian sense of place. I need to point out that we're getting I'm sorry. close to... Okay, so next slide. Just, um, <laughs> I'm talking too much. No, it's Here's, great. here's the uh, interior of the, the, the space again, and you can see that it's, you know, very similar to the other um, units that Bauer had done. And go to the next slide. Um, so this is kind of uh, what I've done since then. You know, these units have been remodeled so many times that we're trying to like bring our unit back to what when this was not only originally intended, but also kind of adding on to the Bauer vocabulary. And then next slide. So this is kind of where we're at now. You know, we're talking about these two buildings, um, and you know, 50, 60 years later, we're both living them now. And um, kind of the integrity of these have, have held up over 60 years. No, I mean, it's just a great 
chance to really look carefully at these incredible pro um, projects that he did. So we, um, it really helps expand what we're trying to do is let the world know that Bauer did an amazing set of projects in, in his um, relatively short time as an architect in, in Hawaii. And um, so great. I think I w uh, one of the things I wanted to do is make sure that we let everybody know that Don Hibbert is going to be speaking in two weeks about Hartwood. And um, that's going to be the next of the mid-century modern program. All right. Great. Cool. Thank you. I yes. Um, I think one of the things, too, just, just to go back, we're still researching all of the buildings that we can find of what Bauer's um, been up to. So we're, we keep finding more and more. He did so much in about a 25 to 30 year period. And um, we're quite lucky to have a chance to also in, live in some of the buildings. Yep. Good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Glad to be here. Good.